If you find hard to start weathering your models after the airbrush painting, or simply don't know if it's better to start with pink wash or chipping, this is your video. Hi everyone, this is Not Your Sponsor and welcome back to my hobby channel. If you were missing some new modeling content, today I bring you a new video. In this I will start working with oils to increase the contrast and definition on the kit, and I will make some nice looking dust effects. So stay tuned for more content and I'll catch you after this. Last video was about the airbrush painting stage and some basic early chipping on the green armor. This time we will start with the weathering process of the T55. Alright, since I completed all the base coating work in the previous video, the model looks very good now, but I still have to fix some missing details. I start painting the rubber band of the wheels with Vallejo Black Grey. About the tactical numbers of the turret, I'm not very sure about the material used to cover them, so for staying the safe side, I choose to paint them in dark grey color. Just a few coats were needed to get a solid finish. Also, I added some black to the mix to get a darker shade for creating some more variation. Because the darker grey mix was still fresh, I decided to keep going with it and painting the rest of details in grey. For now, I only paint parts that are big enough that they will not be covered by dust or oil treatments. Although these pair track links will receive a rusty look at the end, I paint them first in grey. For the periscopes on the turret, I apply on them a coat of pure black. I want to these pieces to be as dark as possible, to get later a depth effect inside them. So it is necessary to use the darkest color you have. For painting the tracks I use an earth color. For my taste, US field draft becomes very handy when painting tracks, even straight from the pot. This is a very easy stage, the only thing to keep in mind is to take care of the other already painted pieces. While painting these pots I discover a very interesting fact. Because I usually prime the tracks with the same color of the main vehicle, I always have to cover them completely to get a convincing result. But this time, and because of a black primer, I realized that if I apply the paint more diluted than usual, paint does not only flow better, paint even gets a better finish. Because of the darker foundation and the diluted paint, it acts like an earth wash. This is something that I like, and I definitely keep trying it in the future models of course. Here you can judge by your own. So, okay, so it's time to move to oil rendering. By this time the model has a few details, but in the bigger surfaces it has a very flat finish, especially on the green areas. I prepare a bunch of oil colors to create some variation. One by one I start leaving small quantities on a thick piece of cardboard. Cardboard material will absorb the excess of oil and will allow us to use only the paint, preventing us to get some undesired glossy finish. For this tank, I chose mostly dark and cold tones, apart from white and some analog colors of green. Before applying the oils, I always moist the surface with enamel thinner. This will prevent the paint to get sticky to the surface. If we create some color patterns, the result will become weird to the eye. Also I place the colors depending on their main value. That means that lighter and brighter colors can be placed on the main areas, and the darker ones will be placed on the recesses or on the most weather areas. When blending oils, I always like to use a fine brush and blend them very soft. Don't worry if it doesn't work with the first pass, you can totally blend them with a second one. Apart from the standard application, I created some intentioned filters on certain parts. Using oils, it gets very easy to create these type of effects. On this particular metal box, I applied only two colors. Both in combination worked very well. In this particular model, and because of the big amount of metal boxes, applying different color filters become extremely handy. Each part will have a slightly different shade, and at the same time everything will be part of the same big structure. The result will vary depending on the colors used, and the final effect you want to create each time. But what makes this effect a success is the variety of colors. On the turret I kept the same application method and colors because I wanted to continue with the same final appearance. This time the only difference is the way of blending oils. Because the tank turrets commonly have different plates with different angles, it is important to apply the effect properly. On the flattest and top areas, blending has to be made with circular movements. And on the other hand, in vertical plates, 
Blending should be made applying vertical passes on the model. For finishing I apply a generous oil filter with paints grey on the gun barrel. This will make the gun visually different and also will create a nice dark finish. This is the final result once all the parts have been treated and blended with oils. The change of the model is notorious and the complexity of the painting process has grown up. Well, after applying the oil rendering, I was not pretty sure about what technique I should apply next. And because this tank is supposed to be in a city environment, the amount of dust should be very light and dull. So I decided to go this time with a pre-dusting layer applied with the airbrush. I used these three Tamiya colors for creating a desaturated and neutral dust color. My aim is to get a color mix capable to create a dust effect and desaturate it enough to be able to modify it later if needed without too much effort. On the model I started the application on the lower areas creating a heavy effect. I start by sketching the dust pattern and later I reforce the areas where I want a heavier coat of dust. Making vertical passes with the airbrush also creates an interesting effect of streaking dust. You can see that I need to apply a few passes to get a solid finish. Applying transparent layers is really the key of this technique, because this is what makes the effect so soft. On the main areas of the hole, I walk really carefully because I'm looking for a light dust the application. And as all of you may know, it is very easy to ruin the model with this type of effects with no reverse options. I focused my efforts on the frontal armor area and some recesses of the engine grills. These Tami acrylics flow very well which makes them ideal for this type of techniques. There is nothing worse than getting troubles with your airbrush while painting. And also Tami acrylics have a very good covering capabilities. On the turret I applied a few passes between the periscopes, hatches and the ventilator piece. I also enhanced the application of dust on the front areas of the turret by overlapping coats of paint. Although the overall result for now on the model might be a little bit hard, there are still some paint processes coming to enhance the dust effect, but you can see how the dust has been sketched over the model. Also, considering from a weathering point of view, the result that can be achieved with this technique is very interesting keeping in mind the extremely basic resources I used to create it. On the wheels, because I was looking for that same light dust result, I just applied a very timid layer of dust on the most recessed areas of each wheel always controlling the amount of paint sprayed. Ok, so now we have a nice model tank with a bunch of effects applied on it. But for now the model has a lack of definition. For this the best way to increase that definition is to apply a pink wash. I prepare an oil mix with sepia and paints grey in a 50% ratio and later I add some enamel thinner. The combination of these colors could create a cold and darker tone that will be applied on all the recessed details of the model and the less exposed areas too. When applying a pink wash, it is always important the color you use. It is always recommendable to avoid using pure black in most cases. This time the color I apply will contrast very well with the warm and desaturated tone applied with the pre-dusting because of their different color temperatures. This time the cold color I apply will contrast very well with the warm and desaturated tone applied with the pre-dusting because of their different color temperatures. Dilution level is also very important. In fact, if oil paint is not properly diluted, pink wash will not work at all. The easiest way to check if the dilution is right is to check if the paint extends by itself through the panel lines. If not, you should add more enamel thinner. On the model, all the raised details like bolts, wall beams and holes are perfect places to apply the pink wash. In this particular tank, the pink wash is completely necessary to increase the shape of the fuel tanks and turret roof details and hatches. Once pink wash is dry, I take pure enamel thinner and a soft brush and I start removing the excess of oil. It is important to not remove completely the effect. You should leave a small amount of paint around the details without removing. Pink wash is one of the most important techniques in scale modeling and it is a must in every single model kit. The way oil paint gets around each detail increases the volume filling and improves the looking of contrast and definition by creating some artificial but necessary shadows on every detail. Alright, so we are done for now. You can see how the model has turned out after all those effects. On this occasion, the sequence I used to apply the different techniques definitely matters. The oil rendering stage created a lot of color variation to the main green color of the model, 
pre-dusting layer make a well-planned sketch for further dust effects in the future, and the pink wash brought all the details and corners of the model back to the final look. You can also check all the little details I applied before, how the gun barrel has a different shade thanks to the dark filter. All the little details painted with acrylics at the beginning, the different metal boxes of the tank with their different color filters applied, and the fine details raised due to the oil pink wash. Next video will be focused upon completing the running gear and some high standard acrylic painting. I'm sure you will like it. If interested in this type of content and looking for future videos, consider to give it a like and share the video with your friends and fellows. Also subscribe and hit the bell if you want to receive all the updates of the channel. If interested in any other different modeling subjects and techniques, you can leave a comment in the box below. So thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.